All right, here we are, back at the elimination rounds of the 2014 Cambridge slash Boston, Massachusetts Netrunner Regional Tournament that was held at Pandemonium Books and Games. This is on the cut to 16 tournament bracket. Uh, game number 18 on the left is Benjamin. Seed number three on the right is Jeff. Seed number four. Left side playing HB Engineering the Future. Right side playing Kate. Here we go. Shuffling. I hope you guys appreciate this. I took a day off from work today, mostly because I had to use all my vacation days before July. It's June 30th. Um, I really want to go outside and go biking, but uh, I also want to finish these videos, so I'm going to put this one out there before I make a move. Oh, there's a hand that's getting mulliganed with no ice. The Jacksons could have saved it, though. There's a hand that's, I guess, also getting not getting mulliganed. Looks like it's got a diesel and some monies. A play mat with the whale there. Love to see uh, some more whale cards come out so we can make all whale decks. Or at least all animal decks. Um, there's plenty of wolves too out there. Dog decks. Yep, yep. Problem is that some of the cards are on the runner side and some are on the corpse side, but that's good. Because eventually someone can run two dog decks. A pair. <laughs> your runner deck's got Keymasters, your corp deck's got Fenris. And let the games begin. HB getting the credits for installing. Um, I've been talking about this recently, but you know, if you look at just the identity cards of the corp and what the identity cards do on their own, right, regardless of what you know faction and cards they come with, right, the HB identity is miles ahead of every other identity, just in terms of what it does on its own. And you get a credit basically almost every turn. In, Basically every turn. It's very rare on a turn you won't get the credit. The Whalen Identity only gets you the credit when you play a transaction. What is that, like nine times a game? So the game, <laughs> and it, that at most, assuming you draw every transaction that you have in your deck, right? Uh, so less than that. Uh, most games are going nine turns plus, hopefully. Uh, HB is just, the Identity is just so good. All right, so the Kate here is playing uh, the prepaid voice bad kind of build, which was pretty popular at this tournament for some reason. He's getting the two voice pads early, which is extremely lucky and extremely ridiculous, because there he goes and plays a <laughs> voice pa uh, a dirty laundry for five. Um, right? But the thing I don't like about the voice pad thing is if you don't get the voice pads early, what are you going to do? Right? You basically, you're playing, the rest of your deck is things like, what, quality time, test run, um, you know, sure gamble is fine, dirty laundry fine, you play those anyway. Another, uh, lucky find a lot of people were playing. And, you know, if you don't get the voice pads early, why, you know, it's sort of like Procon, right? If you don't play it early, or if the corp doesn't give you a moment's rest to where you can afford to spend all the clicks and credits setting it up, then it's not going to work out. He got very lucky there, drawing too early. That's really going to help him uh, boost his economy for the rest of the game, assuming he can draw. Uh, you know, he needs some draw power to get those uh, events out of the deck. Okay, Cyber Cypher. Cyber Cypher is coming back in a big way. Uh, you know, it's sort of taken over where Yag left off, right? A lot of people, you know, they've come out with these bigger, badder code gates. RSVP, Victor 2 is popular, uh, Inazuma is popular, Lotus Field, everyone's going crazy about, it, even though it's not out yet. And Cyber Cypher is really the only efficient way to deal with it, even though it only aims at one server. If they got big code gates, what else are you going to do? <laughs> Leviathan? Whale? Like, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, regardless of what uh, playmats people have, they're not putting Leviathan in their deck, and it's not going to help them anyway. So, um, yeah, you know, so you got to move the Cyber Cypher around, though, and so it's Shaper's Day. 
with the scavenge or lots of memory and multiple cyber ciphers also a good option. Okay, HB here has been installing Sans Sans, which is amazing because not only does it get the corp a credit for installing something, uh, but he's making the runner spend five to trash, right, and and really rush into that remote, really keeping the pressure off uh, R and D and HQ, and he doesn't really care if the Sans Sans get trashed because he's got you know he's got three biotics, right. Roto turret, goodbye cyber cipher. <laughs> Even if you were aimed at HQ, it wouldn't have helped. You gotta know, HV has the most program trashing. You cannot run uh, an unrezzed ice against an HB with money. Uh, if you have a program on the table and no sharpshooter or something like that. Like, you know, that could have been Magnum Opus or something. <laughs> like, if I'm playing Magnum Opus against an HB of any kind, uh, I'm going to get my sharpshooter on the table before I run an unrezzed ice, unless the corp is broke or something. Which is unlikely, because they're getting one credit every time they install something. No, you clone chip the SMC, and he's going to SMC probably a Sentry Breaker of some kind to get through the Roto. Oh, a Parasite. It must be a Parasite because the Roto just went in the trash. It is a Parasite. Boom. Goodbye, Roto. Hello, HQ. Now, this is a good move, right? When someone installs Sand Sands, that's a signal that they have agendas in hand, right? That they wanted to score with that Sand Sand. Uh, that's why, as a corp, if I have Sand Sands, I like, and I don't have agendas in hand... Uh, I like to install them just to make the <laughs> get the runner to not only spend you know credits trash in the sand sand, but also you know if they run HQ a bunch fruitlessly, that's awesome as well. But I mean, I guess it's never wrong to install a sand sand, <laughs> right? Well, there were agendas in there waiting to be sand sand. Oh, there they are. Three points for the runner. Voice pads activate again for quality time. Yeah, those voice pads have paid for themselves by now, but if he hadn't drawn them early, you know, no, you're not playing replicator for that nonsense, right? And I think installing three voice pads is kind of uh, excessive. You know, you get diminishing returns on that third voice pad. And he's dumping a bunch of cards he doesn't want. Oh, there was a beta test in that remote and not a third sand sand. Well, I guess, you know, when you see two sand sands in the trash, you got to think that the new, you know, very unlikely it draws the third one there. Um, great play scoring that beta test. Obviously not using it. Runs HQ, sees Adonis campaign. Let's it go. I mean, under normal circumstances, I like to trash an Adonis campaign after they res it because they've spent the click to install it, and then they've lost the credit resing it. Their HBs didn't actually lose the credit, but at least they they spent the click to install it, right? Um, and then you trash it. Okay, he was just getting some money. Uh, from a sure gamble, then trashing it. Yeah, because if in this case, you know, with uh, with there's no other cards in his hand, he's gonna put that Adonis in that remote, and that's gonna be very hard to trash. Uh, you know, I, I'm so trashing it from the hand is the right move. Now he's got the sharpshooter. Excellent. You're gonna see an Ichi or an Ichi two somewhere, and you're gonna be glad that's on the table. All right, drawn up. Scores three to two. Dino, Dino, what? Lucky find. Well, he's lucky he found that Dino. <laughs> Loving it. What's he putting in there? Um. Against HB, 
Well, he's got cyber ciphers. HP doesn't have bigger code gate than Victor 2. It's not likely that they do. So you don't want to put the cyber cipher in there. You're going to put in either the sentry breaker or the barrier breaker, right? It's either going to boost him up for the Heimdall, put the corroder or who knows, snowball, whatever it is in there. Or I don't know what sentry breaker he's using. Uh, putting a fem in there wouldn't be bad because you could aim the fem token at a Heimdall. Right? And simultaneously get a four strength femme. Which could really help, you know, and each is gonna break for three. Oh, there it is. It says run femme. I called it. And you know, Ichi two is pretty nasty as well. I don't think you really need the femosaurus for the roto turrets, but you know. Oh, look at that legwork. Fem running the legwork. Paddock. H2. Grim. Yeah, Femistor is great against Grim. So it's test run, legwork. Scavenge that Fem. Oh, snap. Fem for free. That legwork is so strong. It's like, you know, these turns. Uh, R&D has a huge stack. You don't know what's going on there yet. There's nothing in the remote, but the Corp just drew a bunch of cards. You know, he's a fast advanced deck, so it's not like you're going to score out of the remote. You're, that, that time is already fast, you know, especially when you saw the biotic in hand. Jack Zone. I think he double clicked that Victor on the remote. But scoring that beta test early means he has to honor that face down Jackson could possibly be another three for two. So good move on both sides there. Play Jackson, so he has to run it. Running it, knowing you have to run it. Uh-oh, here comes a Baddock. Did he top deck an agenda after the Jackson? He did. It's a beta test. Um, I bet he wish he still would have had the Jackson, though. If he still had the Jackson on the table, he could have beta tested, uh, which might have sealed this game. <laughs> a safe beta test with a Jackson on the table. You know, if, I, if like a Heimdall came out, all right, an SMC comes. Hitting R&D. Seeing what he wants to res. He's going to res the first one. Inazuma, that's why he was calculating. All right, is he going to get a Cyber Cypher to aim at R&D? Because that's pretty much the only good way to deal with that. Does he have a second Cyber Cypher? The first one's in the trash. He got Rotoed. He does have a second one. So he's going to be paying two credits to break. Because he only has to... If he wants to continue the run, he only has to break the subroutine that says can't break subroutines. And if he doesn't want to continue the run, he only has to break the subroutine that says um, can't jack out. Oh, and there he goes. So because the Inazuma got broken... The uh, Corp didn't bother resing the other ice, I guess, because they're probably like a Roto or something. The Fem's just going to sweep away. So we still made him get the Cyber Cypher and made him pay uh, to break the Inazuma, right? Now you run again. It's like, do you break the Inazuma again on the, on the other runs, right? There's a Maker's Eye and nothing, but he got the two points on the single run. That could have been game right there. It's 5-4. Agenda's just not showing up for the Corp here. And now he's not going to draw one for three cards. So both sides can chill unless the Corp draws a bunch. Yeah, 
Install, gain a credit for installing, and take two more. Is that a campaign of some sort? Lucky find. What did he find this time? Last time he found a dinosaur robot. Computer. Rig. Console. Thingy. Deus Ex. So you might be thinking, Deus Ex, don't you usually use that to beat Jinteki? Yeah, well, you use it also if you run into a Heimdall to just break all the subroutines. Or, in this case, to break all the subroutines in that Victor 2. Um, I don't understand that move, personally, because uh, you install the Deus Ex, you spend two credits. right? You run the remote, use the Deus Ex to break the subroutines in the Victor 2, and then you access. Well... I guess you save a click that way. Yeah, because you only spent one click to install the Deus Ex. Breaking the Victor 2 with clicks would have been two clicks. But you also spent two credits, which is like a magnum opus click to install the Deus Ex. So, or maybe those are two of the free credits he got from a voice pad on a lucky find. So, lucky found, Deus Ex. Yeah. I guess if the one click is more valuable to you than the two credits... And, and the card of Deus Ex, that's a good idea, but I would have just, if I, you know, not playing the Deus Ex isn't wrong, I would just save it for, like, you know, in case a Heimdall shows up elsewhere. You know, like, maybe install it, run, if they don't res a Heimdall on that first dice, just double-click the victor. Oh, archive memory is so brutal, just bring him back. Sans Sans, putting them right back where they started. You just spent a whole bunch and five credits, and then boom. I'll just put that right back, thank you. Oh, and did I mention I get a credit when I put it back? And I'll put something else on top of it. Still no uh, barrier breaker on the runner side, and still no barriers on the corpse side. We haven't even seen an Eli, uh, which you know there's got to be Eli. Come on. HB deck with no Eli? Well, at least HB fast advance deck with no Eli. Are you kidding me? It's in there. Uh, I'm sure if the corpse had it, he would have resed it by now because nothing the runner has uh, can deal with it. Maybe it's got the fem token on it? Even if the fem token was on it, I might res it because they're still paying too. Oh, there's a Heimdall. Boom. Boom. Sharpshooter ain't going to do it. You need Deus Ex. And I don't see any clone chips. Uh, good thing you got some clicks left. Yep. Triple click. Triple click. No, no, resin the Femda. And a Donis campaign. Yep, trash it. Because he just spent a lot of money on Heimdall. Don't let him get an economy card. And you just spent three clicks on it, so get your money's worth on this run. Your click's worth on this run. Don't let yourself get forced to make another run. Okay, defend HQ. Good. There is a sand sand, but if you don't necessarily have fast advance power at this moment. And, you know, you might draw an agenda if you're not able to fast advance it immediately upon drawing it. Because uh, we know... You know, this game has been, uh, the agendas have not appeared. Well, I guess that's not true. Five have appeared. It looks like the loadout in this deck is going to be three ABT, three Vitruvius for 12, eight more, two Gila Hands and three NAPDs probably, I'm guessing, NAPD slash efficiency committee. So one, two, three, four, six more agendas in the deck uh, have yet to show up. Maker's Eyeball. The agendas aren't showing up. The game is an R&D. Breaks Inazuma. Use Deus X on the Heimdall. No res on the Femme. But that was a Jackson in the remote that was on top of that Sansan. 
So he's going to bring back three cards to dilute. Now, you know, it's kind of disappointing. Uh, it would have been game. There isn't any PD. And he has four credits, for sure. He's got seven over there. Um, it's a good move, using the Jackson on there. Plus, it's game point. So, you know, anything you can do, no matter how small, to just keep the game alive is a good move, right? Shuffle it up big time. And did the dilution save the game? Did the dilution save the game? One, Eve. Two, Adonis. Just thinking about trashing it. Three, Eve. Oh, three campaigns right on the top. Runner cannot trash that biz. That is too much. <laughs> oh, man. Jackson Howard saves. He saves. Is it the second Howard to go out, I think? Well, installing the remote. We know that's a campaign. It's on a new ice, dropping the fem dice. Well, I'm not sure if I like dropping the fem dice, right? If he might have scavenged that fem onto the Heimdall, right? Now, the thing about scavenging the fem onto the Heimdall that's interesting is that. Um, Inazuma says you can't break subroutines in the next ice, and you can't jack out. But if that Heimdall is famed, you're not breaking subroutines on it, you're bypassing it. So if you do that, you could get into R&D for a mere three credits to bypass the Heimdall, completely ignoring the Inazuma. Uh, so if you would have kept the femmed ice there behind the Heimdall, if at some point the runner made the smart move of scavenging, if he has another scavenge, uh, at least he's got the same old thing. It's an event deck with prepaid voice pad, right? Uh, on to the Heimdall. Then, suddenly the ice that was femmed becomes good again. Uh, really good. <laughs> By getting rid of that fem dice, you are basically saying, Hey, runner, you can scavenge your fem right onto that Heimdall on R&D. Uh, no problem. And only the f new ice that I installed in the front is going to make a difference. Oh, look, I see the same old thing in hand, too. You know, cheap R&D runs at three credits are going to gonna end this game for sure. All right, so he's using his Deus Ex again. Loves using that Deus Ex. Um, same old thing. Levy, oh man, I, he brought a Deus Ex. I thought it was going to make a move for a Maker's Eye or a Legwork. He's running Levy, so Levy's pretty good in this deck. Um, because, you know, once you get the voice pads out, if the game goes long like this, you can Levy and all those events come around again. And I guess he knows he's got time here because... Uh, you know, if he's decided to let the Corp have all these campaigns, he knows the next three cards are campaign, he knows the Carp's not drawn agenda, and you have time to levy, plus when you levy afterwards, you're drawing five, uh, and you're putting your hand back in there. So, you might be drawing the five awesome cards you need. Oh, I guess he got the Deus Ex out of the trash. Uh, before levying, right? He wasn't he wasn't getting it to use it. He was getting it to make sure it's on the table, um, you know, for a run. Not bad. Dirty laundry to get some money. Archives is still undefended. There's a diesel to draw up. An SMC, a parasite, sharpshooter. That levy could have been much worse. Much worse. He didn't get the scavenge though. I think there was the same old thing in his hand that he levied. Oh no, he used the same old thing to play the levy. That's right. Otherwise, I would have said, man, you really want the... Uh... 
Well, I guess no. The same old thing on the table after levying doesn't help you because nothing's in the trash anymore. Okay, so we dirty laundry archives to get mad money. That was running R and D. Ichi two, Ichi two, sharpshooter. You have to pay a credit and use the sharpshooter. Boom. It's not game. I didn't see what it was though. Neither did you. But it's not an agenda. Oh, this is the Eve campaign, is what it was. Alright. Wow, all the campaigns just somehow clumped up at the top here. And they are spilling money out now. <laughs> just, uh, everyone's buying viroids these days. So popular, so useful. Rex, not so popular. <laughs> Who needs a Rex Bioroid? <laughs> sure gamble for six credits. <laughs> It's just wrong. I mean, those voice, you know, those voice pads have paid off by now. I'm not a fan of them, but I can't deny that he just played a sure gamble for six credits. Okay, he busted into the remote. San Sandy's letting it go. Adonis, he's letting it go. I guess the reason you check that is because, um. You know, that could have been an NAPD, right? The four for two agendas are going to be, you know, either Biotic plus Sand Sand, uh, Jackson back into the deck, or they're going to be installed onto a Sand Sand and scored the following turn. So when something's installed on top of the known Sand Sand, uh, you have to check it. And you have to check it with four credits left, because NAPD. All right, so Dave, he's got a lot of remotes of all these campaigns. There's a Jackson Howard that's rezzed way off the edge of the table there. Surprised the runner does not run some of those unrezzed remote. Um, I think there may even be, be one. Yep, now there's one way out there, even beyond the Jackson Howard. So you can't see it, but the remotes are number one, Adonis Sanson, number two, Eve, three, Adonis, four, unknown, five, Jackson, and remote number six, unknown card. Because I can't see it on the camera. <laughs> Surprised he doesn't run the Jackson. It's the last one in the game, if I'm not mistaken. Or even if it's the second to last one, it's get rid of it. Uh, you can't let this guy be drawn too. And there's a Sand Sand out. And he's got ten credits. Yeah, those two big silver credits are, are fives. Um... Viper on HQ, nasty, even this late in the game, because Cyber Cypher aimed at R&D. Really needs two scavengers, one to shift the Femme to the Heimdall, and one to shift the Cyber Cypher to, uh, oh, just getting another Cyber Cypher with the SMC. Still the Gila hands. 6-4. Whoa, throwing out the Adonis. Resin the Sansa, and he must have just top-decked an agenda. It's an ABT. 
He's gonna ABT because there's a Jackson on the table. Even though it's game point, it's game point for both players now. But there's a Jackson on the table. The runner did not run it and trash it. Um, moving the camera a little bit here. So, of course, of course you ABT. And Eli comes out blocking R&D, basically saying, hey, listen, we both know all the agendas are in this stack of cards here uh, and not in my hand. So I really don't want to let you get them. And you don't have any uh, barrier breakers right now, so... Why don't you get a Fractor? I know you're playing one. <laughs> yep, he's showing us, he's showing us that he has a Jackson. That's why ABT'd. He runs Archives to make him use the Jackson, and oh, it's a Sand Sand and a Hedge Fund. What a lucky ABT that was. A sand sand he doesn't need, and a hedge fund he doesn't need. <laughs> Who needs hedge funds when, you know, to invest and, and make money by gambling when uh, your products are selling so well? Uh, I think there's an empty Adonis he could throw away, though. <laughs> throw away those plascrets, you don't need them. No scorch in here. All the influence is spent on those sand sands. Yeah, goodbye, unused Adonis. All right, now we can finally see all the remotes. <laughs> oh, protecting the Jackson now. You got a red sand sand. You could like draw two with a and if you had, you could draw two cards with click one. If you got the Bodic in hand, you can score in combo with the sand sand. So you gotta keep that Jackson alive. Lucky find again. That levy. This game is going long. Long game. Runner's been at match point for a while. Corp slowly caught up. SMC. Full memory. Draw, mandatory draw, draw two. You have a biotic and you have money. But if... Oh, oh icing up the sand sand to keep it alive. I guess it means he didn't get the agenda. I still would have drawed two on the first click if I saw the agenda scored it with a Baddock. Maybe he just wants to keep the red sand sand alive because after the lucky find, uh, the runner is basically saying, I'm going to have mad money now. I can, I'm can, i going to trash that sand sand, which is, you know. Oof. Viper followed by Victor 2. It still costs a bit of money. Oh, he didn't have the biotic. That's why he didn't draw two. Makes perfect sense. Checking those unranced remotes. Drawing a bunch of cards. There's a Corroder. Mandatory draw. Is that the game winner? I guess not. Check your ice. Make sure the Sand Sand is safe. Eve campaign complete. People stop buying Eves. Everyone has one now. Just walking around town. Eves and Adonis is everywhere. No people. Just spiroids. All over the place. All over San San City. Just spiroids. <laughs> oh, you know what? I guess even if you draw two and you had the biotic uh, and the San San Res, if you draw a four for two, that's bad. Uh... Because that runner can easily run into HQ. He's leg working all over the place and steal even an NAPD. Even though with the Cyber Cypher right now, it's going to cost him one, two. Uh, well, if, he's, if he doesn't want to lose a click on Viper, right? Two credits to break the Viper and three to break the Victor 2. If you don't want to take a brain damage, so five credits to get an HQ. Not cheap. 
Not cheap at all. Corroder is out. 11 credits. He's calculating what the R&D run will take. Will he dilute the deck with the Jackson if a successful R&D run becomes possible? It cost him. Uh, the reason that they shook hands is because they it, the game has reached time, so the runner is going to complete his turn uh, now that time is out, and then the corp will have one more turn. They are tied at six. Uh, if they remain tied at six in the elimination rounds, the rule is that the higher seeded player will win the game which happens to be Benjamin on the left. He is the three seed against the four seed. Uh, Jeff on the right. Crazy. Uh, unless one player can manage to score on this very turn. So he's looking for R&D. It's pretty much his only chance to score. But I don't think he can actually get in. Um, you know, because If he would have been able to scavenge the fam onto that Heimdall... Then he could have broken Eli for four, and broken the each two for with a with a Femosaurus for you got you got to break the trash programs. Oh, is it four or five credits maybe? Oh no, four and let the trace happen, because who cares about that? And then in this case he has to do Inazuma for two because he doesn't have the he's all scavenged. And then forget breaking the Heimdall. That'll leave him with like one credit left. And no, he only has two, uh, one or two clicks left. So I guess R&D's out of the picture. He's going to HQ instead. His only chance on this final turn. Oop. All right. So he already loses. Uh, if that was his last click, it doesn't matter. But just to seal the deal, there was the uh, biotic, the NAPD that was on top of R&D. Even if he could have gotten into R&D, I think it would have cost him all his credits, and he couldn't have taken the NAPD. So, top decking it. Corp makes a big comeback.